I see a shark. I see a shark. <laughs> I see a shark. In 1808, Ludwig van Beethoven began to create images in the minds of his listeners. He gave his Sixth Symphony descriptive movement names, such as awakening of cheerful feelings on arrival in the countryside. He began to describe images using the orchestra. For the country outing, he featured woodwind instruments, who were usually more in the background of the music. Beethoven's new ideas were a success. The first movement conjures up associations with excursions in idyllic country life. But that idyll is disturbed. Thunder, storm is the title of the fourth movement. Here, brass and percussion dominate. The idea of program music, music with a meaning or concept, was born with the Sixth Symphony and quickly became an important genre of romantic music. In his Symphonie Fantastique from 1830, Hector Berlioz chose the same instrumentation for the saint Marchand movement as Beethoven had done 20 years earlier. In Richard Strauss's monumental Alpine symphony, Beethoven's instrumentation is still unmistakably the model for Strauss's 1915 program music. The idea of using sounds to create moods and associations with landscapes took over Hollywood with the introduction of sound in films. Movie soundtracks became elaborately orchestrated. One of the very early sound films, Fantasia by Walt Disney, uses the first movement of Beethoven's Sixth Symphony to depict an idyllic fantasy nature scene. Beethoven's music has since been used in countless film productions around the world. Composers who had fled Europe, such as Eric Wolfgang Korngold, brought Beethoven's legacy to American films, creating a new lasting standard. And even the greatest modern day film composer makes clever use of Beethoven formulas. In the Star Wars films, the forces of good, embodied by Princess Leia and Luke Skywalker, are played by woodwind instruments. Evil, with its imperial march, is dominated by brass instruments. Coincidence? We are at one of the greatest music festivals in the world, the Tanglewood Music Festival in Lenox, Massachusetts. And one of their yearly highlights is Film Night, where, of course, they play the music of the legendary John Williams. The composer of Jaws, Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, Harry Potter, Star Wars and many, many others has influenced the film music industry of the last decades more than anyone else and won many Oscars and Grammys along the way. The typical John Williams sound touches millions of fans around the world and me especially as a horn player.
As a moviegoer, I could not imagine a world without John Williams. And this is what we're talking about today, a world without, without Beethoven. It's also impossible to imagine. Yes, it is. So Beethoven was the first composer to actually write programmatic music. In his sixth symphony, he gave each each movement a title so that the listeners would know exactly what they were listening for. Yes, the sixth symphony is maybe an anomaly to him that he thought he might have been making entertainment. You said in an interview that you felt that Beethoven was one of the greatest organizers of sound. No question. The idea of organizing sound with instruments in this case into shapes and, and eventually into things that will exchange emotions. It's hard to imagine like life without Beethoven. I had a conversation about this meeting with you with an elderly doctor friend of mine who was very, very brilliant. And I said, what, what is your answer to what would the world be like without Beethoven? And he said very quickly to me, what would life be like if we'd never seen a rainbow? But how do you decide which instrument is going to be the one to portray Princess Leia, or which instrument is going to be the one to make, to make us scared? Is that something, do you have a, a program you've worked out over the years? I mean, there are instruments that are associated with certain things, you know. I recently did a recording with Anna Sophie Muta, which you probably know, and she wanted to play Star Wars, and I said, Anna Sophie, you have, <laughs> Star Wars, you have to have trumpets and cymbals and horns, horns you know, and all of that. <laughs> you really can't play that on the violin. So we had fun adapting things that, that could be played. The music of John Williams is not only for movies, it's played in concert halls around the world, including here in the Vienna Musikverein, where Beethoven himself was an honorary member. Tradition in theater and in film, if you have a villain, you would probably have, in the old days, you would have a diminished seventh chord played tremolando somewhere. There is an expectation culturally of certain kind of things where the horn is established as the hero. We like that. These connections apply, they're historical, they're cultural, that forms a structure within which you have some freedom. Do you know in the Seventh Symphony, in the third movement, and then the trumpets and horn go, and then he does this. <laughs> and then it goes into the into the I theme. See, I see a shark. I see a shark. <laughs> I see a shark. When, when Simon it's terrifying. Hoffman, yeah, terrifying <laughs> shark. And we've always wondered if that was the precursor to the Jaws theme. I think so. <laughs> I think I think Beethoven had been swimming. The drama in Beethoven's music has been an endless source of inspiration for film scores. It's incredible how much Beethoven has shaped our music world. Whether in jazz, film scores, or rock music, his innovations and ideas are everywhere.